that. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا اللهم زدنا علما إنك أنت عليم حكيم اللهم اجعل هذه كلمة حجة لنا لا حجة علينا يا رب العالمين أما بعد تلاقي إن شاء الله تعالى ولنا قوثو A small piece here, it talks about steps to happiness. Khudawat ila sa'ada. Something that every human being on the face of this earth is searching for. Happiness. Everyone wants happiness. Right? Islam, <clears throat> it gives us, as Muslims, an opportunity to achieve that goal if that's truly what we're looking for. So there's a small piece that was put together by one of the ulama, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Qasim Hafid Allah Taala. His book is called Al Khudawat Ila Saada. It's a really, really good book. I don't even I don't know if it's translated. I think it may be. Um, but we're gonna pull some uh, some nice benefit from this book, inshallah Taala. <clears throat> it was a book in which uh, many of us, when we were in school, we would read it over and over again. Um, one of the benefits in it is towards the end of the book, it gives you uh, a way or a path in how to memorize the Qur'an, how to memorize different mutun, uh, how to memorize in general. It gives you a, a detailed description on a good way to memorize and to ensure that your memorization is firm. So the first thing he mentions in this section, Al-Ikhlas lillahi tariq as the first path, the first step, or the first um, path, if you will, for us to achieve happiness. Everyone wants happiness. It's not a human being on this earth except that they will tell you they want to be happy, right? But how do we achieve happiness? If you had a lot of money, would that make you happy? Huh? You think if you had a lot of money, it would make you happy? Anybody? You think so? Oh, you, I said, okay. Right? If a person had anything that they want in the material world, maybe they think that would make them happy. But happiness, brothers and sisters of the Islam, believe it or not, it comes with being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Al ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah, tariq al sa'ada. This is the pathway to happiness. And so he mentions here the different verses in the Quran. Our intentions must be correct. So the first thing in order for us to achieve happiness, we have to check our intentions and the things that we're doing. So it says, Bill in class, that we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil ikhlas. Uh -huh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with ikhlas, with sincerity. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, fa'budillaha mukhlisan lahu deen. Worship Allah sincerely and to him belongs the religion. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said to him, قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِبْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah told the Messenger of Allah, say that you were commanded to worship Allah مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ Sincerely to him, making your deen sincerely for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, قُلْ إِلَّهَ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ وَقُلْ إِلَّهَ أَعْبُدَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ and likewise, the same thing again. Say that you worship Allah mukhlisan lahu deen, meaning your deen is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in order for us to have sincerity, if you will, 
For salah al-amal min salah al niyyah In order for us, a person may look at his actions, right? In order for our actions to be correct and sound, then we have to first check our intentions. And once we check our intentions, it goes back to us checking what? Our hearts. So at the end of the day, it starts with us looking at the mirror at ourselves and ensuring that what we do, is it sincerely for Allah? Or are we doing this for other than Allah? Or are we doing this to be seen of the people? Or are we doing this to show off, etc., etc.? Usul qabul al a'mal in the Allah al ikhlas wa mutada'ah. In order for our deeds to be accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by Allah, that we have to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we also have to be in accordance or a mutada'ah, meaning following the prophetic sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Ibn Mas'udin, who was a companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا ينفع القوة وعمل إلا بنية ولا ينفع القوة والعمل والنية إلا بما وافق السنة. Ibn Mas'ud, he said, the statement and the action will not benefit unless it's accompanied with intentions or sincerity. ولا ينفع القوة والعمل والنية and if a person has the correct statement, the correct action, and the correct intention, this will also will not benefit that person unless it is in accordance with the sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. According to uh, Imam Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, مَا أَقَلُّ مَنْ يَعْمَلُ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى خَالِسًا Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala, he died in the beginning, I think he died in 510 Hijri, which is over 900 years ago, about 800 plus years ago. He said, there are few people, now this is 800 years ago, he said there are very few people who sincerely do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least during his time, he said most of the people, they will love the people so that the people can see their outward acts of worship. They will love for people to see their outward acts of worship. If this was 800 years ago, then what about now? Are we better than them? Huh? Are we better than the people during that time? Ibn Rajib, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in Jamil Ulum al Hikam, in his explanation of uh, Arba'in al Nawawi, he says, Ar-Riyah al Mah. He said, Pure showing off. He said, If a person sincerely wants to show off, La yakadu yastaru min mu'min fi fard al salat wal siyam. He said, If a person that is sincerely trying to show off, it'll be hard to see that in a believer in his prayer and his fasting. His prayer and his fasting is hard for you to find a believer in general showing off in their prayer, in their fasting. He said, however, However, you can see it if a person gives charity. Al-wajiba. They give their obligatory charity or if a person were to make hajj. Or any form of worship that can be outwardly seen or praised by someone else. <clears throat> so he says, <laughs> Especially the types of outward worship that can become a benefit to someone else. So for example, if a person gives in charity, you know a person may need it, and you're aiding another Muslim. Huh? These are from the things where a person can have riyah or showing off. وَهَذَا الْعَمَلَ شَكَّ Muslim أَنَّهُ حَابِتْ and Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, no doubt that this will nullify the deeds of that person. And the person who does this, they are deserving of Allah's punishment. They are deserving of Allah's anger and His punishment. So, because of this issue of sincerity, we find that Many of the scholars of the past, including Imam al-Bukhari, 
uh, Imam al Bukhari, rahimahullah. We also have uh, Imam al Maqdisi in his book, Hamdat al Ahkam, uh, Imam al Baghawi in his book, Sharh al Sunnah, Masabi al Sunnah, Wa al Nawawi fi Arba'in al Nawawi, and a, a lot of different books. All of them start with the hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ That actions are judged by their intentions. This shows the importance of sincerity. Many of us will say, Tama, a person may say that they're being sincere, but Allah knows best. <clears throat> Allah knows best uh, how sincere a person may be. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala he said, ما أجلت, ما أجلت تقل, Imam Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, I didn't have anything harder to do or I was quick in trying to suppress or trying to rectify. Again and again, nothing was harder for me than my niyyah, than my intentions. He said, this is because our or his intention tataqallaba meaning it constantly changes now Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala he was from the great imams of Islam yet he was honest enough he was honest enough with himself first and with the people around him secondly to say that the most difficult thing for him to control was his niyyah and that and this was because the niya constantly changed. Yet how many of us are honest enough with ourselves first to say, you know, I gotta check my intentions all the time because it constantly changes. If a person were to do any type of action that was not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this would be a tremendous problem for that Muslim. يقول أبو أمام الباهلي رضي الله تعالى عنه he said جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله there was a man who came to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said يا رسول الله oh messenger of Allah أرأيت رجلا غزا يلتمس الأجر والذكر ما له he said there was a man who he went to war, he fought in battle and combat with us. Wa dhikr malahu. Tell me about this man. Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la shaylahu. I have nothing to say about him. He said, fa'adaha alayhi thalatha marrat. Wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. Yaqulahu la shaylahu. He said, so I repeated myself three times to this, you know, just to, like, you know, this man he fought in a battle with us. Like, what do you have to say about him? And so the Prophet ﷺ said, La shaylahu. I have nothing to say about him. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept the actions of a person except that it was done sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking Allah's face. This is an indicator that this man, he did an act of worship that was apparent and outward for everyone to see. Yet, when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about that person, he said, I have nothing to say about him. Meaning perhaps his actions were not done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ana aghna shuraka, as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ana aghna shurakai ani shirk. Man amala amalan ashraka ma'i ghayri, taraktuhu wa shirkuhu. And this hadith that was reported in Sahih Muslim, when Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, he said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is free from having any partners. And whoever does anything, any act of worship and associating it with me, Allah said, I love him and his shirk. So then the first thing, the first step to happiness, brothers and sisters in Islam, is that we must be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And what is wajib, what is obligatory upon a Muslim is that we are to be sincere and we are also commanded to do actions. Sincere and commanded to do actions. In Islam, <clears throat> the ibrah or the litmus test, if you will, is not the amount of actions that a person does. Yes, we are commanded to do actions, but the test is not how many actions a person can perform. In the Maluajib, Sihat al Ikhlas, the Lahi wa Kafanat al Amal Muwafiq, the Sunnah al Mustafa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what is incumbent is that our intentions are for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and that our actions are in agreement with that of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu wa Salam. وَقَدْ جَمَعَ رَبُّنَا ذَلِكَ فِي كَوْلِ تَعَالَى As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an وَمَا أُمِنُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلَسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ حُلَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاءَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his, in his verse وَمَا أُمِنُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ that I did not command them except that they worship Allah sincerely until Allah belongs to religion. And then the actions that were done while you came salat, that they established the prayer and paid the zakat. <clears throat> this verse in the Quran, it contains in it three things. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, establishing the prayer and paying the zakat. These issues here are very important as it relates to a Muslim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned, Qala Fudayl ibn Iyad. Fudayl ibn Iyad, he was one of the scholars of the past. How many people heard of Fudayl ibn Iyad? Anyone? One, two, three. Does anyone know his story? Who was he? I sent. He was a highway robber. Um, and in Arabic text, he will be considered a qatari, a person who cuts off the path. A qatari, there's a prescribed punishment for these people. Uh, in Islamic jarima uh, wal-uquba, crimes and punishments in Islam, a person that cuts off the path. For example, you have people who break into home, home invaders, etc they will be considered qatta People who wait in the pathway for people to come a certain way and they jump out and they attack them, etc. These would also be considered qatta people who cut off the path. In Islam, Islam has a prescribed set of uh, crimes and punishments. Obviously, we don't implement them here, but if you lived in an Islamic society, then these laws, obviously they have different sets of laws here that apply to people that do this. But in an Islamic society, uh, if Islamic law was in place, this particular aspect of it, people who are qatta'atariq, in general, some of these people may be executed. May be executed just for cutting off the path for the people, putting a hardship uh, on the people. At any event, Fudayl ibn Iyad, he was from the people that was considered to be a highway rock. And this is important because in our society, some people from among us could have been like that. It's highly possible. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided some of us to Islam and rectify our situations. Having said that, this is an excellent example of a person who was known to be that way. It's actually, it's recorded in the history books about Fudayl ibn Iyad, what he used to do before Islam. Yet, what was the story? Does anyone know the story? What happened to him? What happened? The verse, what was it? I'm I'm in Like, he said that he heard the verse, were you, were you created from anything or were you yourself created? Some say that this happened when he broke into someone's home and he heard that being recited. Allah knows best. Uh, the exact story, it doesn't come to me right now. Um, but, Fudayl ibn Iyad, yes? I think he heard the verse, Alam 
Right. So it could have been that verse. At any event, I'm not sure of the exact verse. Right? At any event, he heard something from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it turned his heart. It turned his heart and he accepted Islam. Fudayl ibn Iyad, he went on to become one of the greatest scholars in Islam in the hadith. In fact, he had his own students and so on and so forth. And as one of the one of one of our mashaykh they mentioned to us years ago, he said that today there may be ulama that are known, but then after they pass away, you will never hear any trace of them again. And then there were ulama in the past during their time period, they were not known at all. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took their soul, they became everyone knew who they were afterwards by their works. And so he said this could be a sign to show the sincerity that a person may have when they do their works. Like for example, we have Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Does anyone know what happened to Imam al-Bukhari before he died? Huh? What happened to him? His students abandoned him. His students all abandoned him. Imam al-Bukhari, before he passed away, he didn't have any students at all. None. Yet, today, his works, is you won't find a Muslim household except that you have his copy of Sahih al-Bukhari in this house, in your home. There's not a Muslim today except that they read through his books, his compilation of a hadith. At any event, uh, Fudayl ibn Uyad, he said, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ Fudayl ibn Uyad, he's talking about this verse in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the one who created death. Listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created death and he created life. What is the purpose? Why did Allah create death and life? Why? Allah says in the Quran, لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ So that Allah may test us to see which of us are best in action. Understand something brothers and sisters in other Islam. If you think that you were created on this earth for any other purpose, other than worshiping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you are mistaken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That He only created us for the purpose of worshiping Him. That's the only reason why we're here. So Allah says, أَلَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to test us to see who was best in our deeds. So Imam Fudayl ibn Uyad, he explains this verse. The deeds that Allah is talking about here, he says, Akhlasahu wa aswabah. He said, those deeds that are more or that are the most sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most correct in accordance with the sunnah of his Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Qalu ya Aba Ali. So they said, Ya Aba Ali, yani to Fudayl ibn Uyad. They said, his father, his son, he had a son named Ali, and they would call him Abu Ali. And they would say, Ya Aba Ali, O father of Ali, ma akhlasahu wa aswabu. What is that which is most sincere and most correct? What is that exactly? فَقَالَ لِعِنَّ الْعَمَلَ إِذَا كَانَ خَالِسًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ صَوَابًا لَمْ يَقْبَلْ He said, if a person has actions, and their actions are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're not in accordance with the sunnah of his Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, lam yaqbal. Then these actions will not be accepted. And he says, wa idha kana sawabin, meaning, if a person has done some actions in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, wa lam yakun khalisan, and then it's not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lam yaqbal hatta yakun khalisan sawabin. That that person's actions will not be accepted until they become sincerely for the sake of Allah and in accordance to the prophetic sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So the next part, remember, the book here is about steps to happiness. So the first part of being happy is that we must learn to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. وَمَا هِيَ الْأَعْمَالَ الَّتِي أَخْلَصَ فِيهَا لِلَّهِ 
And so the next part, a person may ask themselves, what are some of the actions that I can do that I can be the most sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he says that most people think that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only when you recite the Qur'an, is only when you pray in your salat, is only in the actions of worship that everyone else can see. And spending on your family and calling on Allah in front of people, etc. And the Shaykh says, well, هذا غير صحيح. This is not correct. He says, rather, الإخلاص الواجه في جميع العبادات That having sincerity in your worship is for all aspects of worship, even to the point when we visit our neighbors. When a person visits their neighbors, this is a form of worship. And when a person does that, they need to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wasila to rahim and connecting the family ties. We may not look at that as worship, but it is an act of worship. And it's an act of worship that should be done sincerely for the sake of Allah. Birru walidain, being dutiful to your parents. Some of us, lil asaf, some of us, may Allah rectify our affairs, some of the Muslims are disrespectful to their parents. Some may say, well, my father and my mother, they're not Muslim, so I, I can say what I want to them. This is not correct. This is not supported in Al-Islam. And if you have Muslim parents, if you have parents that are Muslim and you don't respect them, way heck, way heck. Honoring the parents in Al-Islam is a tremendous act of worship. All of those things that were mentioned, all of those things are things that are in need of a person's sincere uh, focus and concentration on worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, we're going to stop now and maybe pick up later and we're going to continue this inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the goal of this here, something that is light, but at the same time has a lot of meaning in it. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a serious issue. Every human being wants to be happy. Every human being wants to be happy. If you were to ask a person, what will it take for you to be happy? Most people would mention material things. If I had this and if I had that, all I needed was this. If I had a couple more dollars, I could do this. If I had this, I would do that. I would be this and that. That doesn't make a person happy. Because there are people that have all of those things that you're looking for, but they're still not happy. And once we as Muslims understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, it will help us get to the level of happiness. At any event, we're going to stop with that, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Anyone have any questions, inshallah, while we're waiting, while we pass out the dates? No, nah, brother. What is the meaning of way hack? Way hack is like woe to you. Like you, basically you set yourself up for failure. If a Muslim, if a, if a Muslim is disrespectful to their parents, right? How do you expect to be successful in this world and in the next? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ Now listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a wasiyah. A wasiyah is, when a, let's say for example, when a person dies, they leave a will. A will is like a wasiyah, right? This is the things that I want done, etc., etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first wasiyya, or the first will, the first final testament, if you will, that Allah left us, is that we worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with Him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدَ رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, immediately after, stressing the importance of a tawheed, and not associating partners with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately mentions after that, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And be dutiful to your parents. Be honorable to your parents. 
Huh? Be dutiful and honorable to your parents. And this doesn't, and if you look through the, the tafsir of the ayah, it doesn't specify Muslim parents. Rather, it says parents. For all of your parents, be honorable and dutiful to them. This is our obligation as Muslims. Now, fuck it. Way ahead? Yes, it could be. It could be. Now, fuck up. Fudayl ibn Iyad. Fudayl ibn Iyad. Everybody ready to break, huh? Bye. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi